In this video, I'm going to continue talking about separable equations, and um, I'll go through an example, the example that you see in front of you. Um, the goal of this example is not only to do another example showing how the technique works, um, but I want to talk about this issue of how to deal with initial conditions when the inversion problem is uh, not straightforward. In other words, you remember in the example with the circle that I did in the previous video, um, I I had to be careful taking a square root to get y equal expression on the right hand side um, because when I did that I had to choose a plus or minus and I, I may have lost the opportunity to solve certain initial conditions. So okay so and I'm going to use slides here because there's some plots later in the in the um, in the in the video that will require uh, me going too quickly with a pen and too accurately with a pen to do a good job of it. Okay, so um, so here's the example that we're going to um, consider. Uh, y prime is equal to one over cosine y. So I want you to stop your uh, your your viewer and uh, take a pen and paper or pencil and paper and uh, use the method that we talked about, the one for separable equations, to uh, to solve this problem. Okay, uh, you, I trust you finished that and got an answer. And now I want you to look through this list here and uh, and see which one of those you think is the correct answer. So um, the correct answer, okay, is there's two of them. Um, so if you went as far as this step here and you didn't think to go any further, well, I would encourage you to think about going further because just because this is my favorite answer, which is why it gets the pink, um, you didn't get all the way to a y equal and what you really should do is say, okay, can I really isolate for y here? And the answer in this case is yes, but at a cost. So this is isolating y equal something or other. And much like the decision when we took a square root in that circle example, we had to choose whether the square root, we were going to choose the plus or minus square root. Well, something very similar is happening here, but actually a lot more complicated. So the reason I like C better than B is that C still has the capability of solving any initial condition. So let's, uh, let's go through that a little bit. Okay, so um, here's the solution that we've got written down uh, when we isolated um, for Y. And, uh, and we can plot that, as you can see here, the purple one is with c equals zero. And, oh, I should do, let's be fancy. So that's when, sorry, not c, well, that is c equals zero, but that's in order to solve the initial condition, um, y of zero equals zero. So here's the y of zero equals zero point, And this curve, we get it by finding the c value that makes the origin the curve go through the origin. And then here we have an initial condition we want y of 2 to be equal to 0. And that required when you plug in 0 or 2 here and 0 here, that gives you a c value of minus 2. And here I am trying to be too fancy and not keeping up with it. So. Okay, so um, then the, so the C value here is, mm, C equal minus two. Okay, so what that means is with the changing C value, we can sweep this curve back and forth wherever we need to by changing the C value, and we can solve any initial condition between these dotted lines, which is great. We have a whole swath of the plane where we can solve initial value problems. But what if we had an initial value, let's say, up here or out here or way down here? This piece of the arcsine function or this arcsine function can't do it for us. We can't solve using just that piece. So what we need to do is we need to remember that when we inverted the sine function, we had to make a choice. And that choice, actually, let me make this centered. And maybe I'll make the axes in blue in the graph so we can distinguish easily in purple. So the choice we had to make was when inverting, there's this problem that um, I don't want to have a single 
input to the inverse function. So this is the sine of x or sine of t, and this is x or t down here. And so when we plug in a uh, y value into the brackets of the arc sine, um, there's two possible values we can go back to. And we don't want that. That's not a function. So we have to chop this function before we invert it. And the tradition is to just chop it here between the min and the max so that you always have a unique set of points. For any input, you have a unique output. It, that rules out this branch here and this branch out here. But those branches were still reasonable choices. It's just we like to be close to the origin because it's easier to draw our graphs that way. So what we need to do is we need to consider these other branches out here and here in order to solve these initial conditions that are outside of the range of the usual arcsine function. Okay, so let's go on. Um, ah, okay, so this is another point that, um, that I, I want to point out here. So for any one of these solutions, um, it's limited in scope. Right? We have an initial condition, let's say, at the origin, and because the arcsine function just stops at the max of the sine function, that means the solution that we have, it can go for a little while, but then we're out of luck. And you can see what happens to the slope of the function at this point. The slope of the function goes to zero, and if we go back to the original dif differential equation, um, sorry, the slope, of the, <laughs> the slope of the function goes to infinity there, and that's because that's when cosine has a zero in it, and we end up dividing by zero, making dy dt infinite. Okay, so that's that's one thing, just that's, that's an aside to keep in mind that we don't always get solutions that last for all time. So now back to this question of where can we solve? So the, the original branch of arcsine lets us solve for initial conditions anywhere in the purple zone. Um, but what if we if we think of this as the original sine function instead of just the chunk and we use this expression for the solution implicitly, then we have the whole sine graph, this yellow or this purple curve. And now when we, when we change C, we're able to slide that whole sine graph, which is tilted on its head on its side, back and forth. And then we can find any initial, we can find a solution for any initial condition. So here's an example. If y of zero is equal to three pi over four, that's here well above the top end of our usual arcsine answer. And that means that, um, so if y of zero is equal to three pi over four, that means we're, the solution is going to be the yellow curve. Now you'll notice as a function of t, the yellow curve is not a function, it's multi-valued. But now we know which branch to choose. We go to this maximum here of the sine function, and instead of going taking the piece below that, we take the piece above it. So we're interested in this piece of the arcs of the sine function to invert. And that's the solution to this equation. So if we now want to say, okay, uh, how far can I go? How far does the solution go? And before it has problems, in this case, we have to find where does this maximum sit? And that's the t value at which we no longer have a solution. So here, the solution exists. In this case, I was able to calculate it. Um, and the way I calculated it was finding this c value and then I, I plug that c value in over here, and that gives me an equation sine of y is equal to t plus 1 over root 2. And then what do I want? I want to find the point at which the sine hits its highest point. And that's going to be at pi over 2, so I need to find the t value when the y value is pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2, which is 1, is equal to t plus 1 over root 2. And now I get that t is equal to 1 minus 1 over root 2. So that's how I found the upper extent of where the solution goes to. Okay, and again that happened because when y is equal to pi over 2, the differential equation hits uh, 1 over 0 spot. Okay, so when do we get a problem with, uh, with initial conditions? So 
um, we had an exponential function case we saw where um, uh, well so this is this is what we, we saw earlier with linear equations and this is no problem we have um, uh, there's no problem with inverting these guys well there's no problem solving the for the C value but when we had an implicit case where we had to take a square root of the y, instead of having all of these circles accessible to us, as soon as we wrote down y equals square root of stuff, we were chopping it and ignoring either this, or if we put a minus sign in front when we, when we calculated the square root, we'd be ignoring all of this. So here in the non-inverted example or case, we were able to solve for any initial condition, but if we solved for y explicitly, we had to be careful. And the same thing for the sine example. Okay, so you can see here, once I go to these solved cases, I'm no longer able to solve for these out of range initial conditions. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to say about separable equations for now. And um, next we'll move on to some modeling.